hello student in our last video we have discussed about solar cooker and which is one of the photothermal applications in that we are able to cook the food with the help of solar energy and we know that the solar energy is the non conventional energy source and which is a free of cost so all this working of the solar cooker and which is the box type solar cooker we have seen our we have been seen ever in our last videos and uh, also we have seen some advantages and disadvantages of the solar cooker now in this video we will discuss about some other photo photo thermal applications that is the solar energy is used for the heating purposes that is the generally water heating so let's discuss that is the solar water heating systems and in that we know that the solar water heating system is used for the different purposes that is the hot water which obtain from the solar water heating system is used for the different purposes so depending on that these solar water heat solar water heating system is a classified into two different types so let's see solar water heating systems can be classified into two categories first is the natural circulation it is also called as a thermosiphon systems or it is also called as a domestic hot water system and second type is the forced circulation system this system is classified into two types because this classification is depending on the use of hot water which is obtained from that system in a natural circulation system the hot water which can be obtained is generally used for the domestic purpose and in a forced circulation system the hot water which is obtained which which used for the other purposes that is the industrial purpose depending on that the classification of the solar water heating system takes place now let's see one by one so let's see first is the natural circulation or thermosiphon systems it is also called as a domestic hot water system because it is used for the domestic purpose that is the hot water which obtained from this system is used as a domestic sir domestic purposes a typical system for domestic hot water system is shown in the figure that is in this figure this is the natural circulation solar water heater from which we can able to obtain the hot water now let's discuss how it constructed and how it works so first we see the construction so the two main components of the domestic hot water system are as follows that means the the natural circulation system consists of generally two parts and which is the very important part of that system so let's see first is the the liquid flat plate collector and second one is the storage tank the liquid flat plate collector used for the heating heating purposes and the storage tank is also is used for the storage of the hot water as well as the cold water side by side because uh, there is a convection process so that the through this convection process heat is a transfer that is the hot water is replaced by or cold water is replaced by hot water so the storage tank is very important for the replacement of the cold water by the hot water the storage tank is located above the level of the collector that means the storage tank is slightly little above the level of the collector so that the water gets easily pumped now how it works let's see working as the water is heated by solar energy it flows automatically to the top of the tank and is replaced by cold water from the bottom of the tank that means if we placed the natural circulation system in sunlight or if we put the system where the sunlight is present so that there is a liquid flat plate collector and we have studied about the liquid flat plate collector how it works so this liquid flat plate collector is generally for the generation of the hot water when we 
place this liquid flat plate collector in a sunlight the sunlight is incident on the liquid flat plate collector and it collect all the sunlight and this sunlight is converted in the into the form of that is other energy that is the heat energy and this heat energy is utilized for the heating of the working fluid and in this case we are using working fluid which is the water and so the heating of the water takes place and after that this water is collected for the other purposes that is used for the other purposes so in this case as the heated as the water is heated that is the as as we seen just before how the water he get heats so as the water is heated by solar energy it flows automatically to the top of the tank we know that but how this automatical automatic process takes place because we know that the the density of hot water is less as compared to the density of cold water therefore the hot water gets easily pump you know upward direction that is to the top of the tank and is replaced by cold water from the bottom of the tank so this process will continue and uh, we can provide cold water and we we are able to obtain the hot water hot water for use is withdrawn from the top of the tank actually this process is a happens in in the same tank that is the hot water and the cold water is a pump side by side that means this process takes place through the convection process that means the up at the upper part of the tank there is a hot water and there at the lower part of the tank there is a cold water this heat is a transfer layer by layer that means the cold water is continue continuously replaced as the hot water enter in the tank so this process is like a loop process whenever this is done cold water automatically enter at the bottom of the tank that means the, all this process is done or completed the cold water automatically enters at the bottom of the tank and there is a wall which is shown in the figure which provide the cold water to the tank and uh, at the other side the hot water is uh, distributed to the system where it is used and there is also auxiliary heater that means in a rainy season or in a cloudy days there is no sunlight or very less intensity of the sunlight in that case we use auxiliary heater for the heating of the water that means this system is also work in a cloudy and rainy season because we use the auxiliary heater in a absence of solar radiation in general in a perfect sunny days we can use this system and it gives very better efficiency but if there is no sunlight then auxiliary heaters are used so there is a flat plate collector which is used for the collection of the solar radiation and which convert this solar radiation into the form of heat and this heat is passing through the tubes we know that in a liquid flat plate collector there is a tube system through which the liquid flu liquid fluid or in this case is a water which is the water so this water gets heated and this heated water automatically pump to the upper part of the tank because we know that the density of hot water is less as compared to the density of cold water and this process will continue that is the natural circulation solar water heating system this portion this process is a naturally occurs that means only the point is that the density of hot water is less so this is the natural circulation for solar water heater and the figure is the schematic diagram of the natural circulation solar water heater an auxiliary heating system is sometimes provided for use on cloudy or rainy days that means as we discussed the auxiliary heater is provided which is useful in a rainy or cloudy days for the heating of the water that is in absence of sun light if there is a sunlight then there is no problem but in absence of sunlight auxiliary heating system is used most of the system have capacities of 100 to 200 liters per day and uses one or two flat plate collectors having area of 2 meters square each that means the capacity of natural circulation system is nearly about 100 to 200 liters that means this system is able to produce 100 to 200 liters per day that is the hot water 
which produces hot water that is 100 to 200 liters per day within one day the system produces hot water which is in the order of 100 to 200 liters and it uses one or two flat plate collectors having area of two meters square each that means it can be constructed with the help of one or two more one or two flat plate collectors and each of flat plate collector having area two meters square so this is the natural circulation system which is constructed with the help of flat plate collector and the which is used for the purpose that is the water heating purpose so it is called as a liquid flat plate collector and this system is used in a domestic purpose so this is all about the natural circulation systems or heating systems but it has some advantages as well as disadvantages so let's see first is the advantages now first advantage is the it is a simple to construct and install that means it requires only two components mainly two components that is the liquid flat plate collector or simply flat plate collector and the storage tank so it is a simple to construct and also installation cost is also low second advantage is the it requires very low maintenance and running cost also less that means it require only cleaning maintenance there is no need to op to any special operator to operate that system so it requires very low maintenance and running cost is also very less so this is very important advantage of this system third advantage is the save time and energy this uh, system which help us to reduce the, our electricity bill and save the time that means the, we there is no need to spend our time there for the heating purposes of the water only so this uh, system save the time and the energy next advantage is the it is a pollution free and free of cost that means this system is operate which is based on only the solar radiation that means we know that the solar radiation is a non-conventional energy source and which is a free of cost which is present in our environment as long as we have sun then we are able to obtain the solar energy so this is the free of cost and it is a pollution free that is it does not produce any pollution that means there is no factor which are harmful to the our environment that is it is a pollution free next advantage is the required temperature easily achieved with the simple equipment that means for the domestic purpose we have a required temperature and this required temperature is obtained with the help of this simple arrangement that means we require only flat plate collector and the storage tank and it is very easy for the construction so this is achieved with the simple equipments this is all the advantages of the natural circulation systems but it has uh, some disadvantages so first disadvantage is the it can be used during night and cloudy days it cannot be used that means when there is a sunlight then and then we can use this device for the production of the hot water that is it is can it cannot be used during night and cloudy days in uh, there is a alternative device that is the auxiliary heating auxiliary heaters which we can use but this is the disadvantage of this system now second disadvantage is the it gives better efficiency only in a sunny days that means when we have large intensity of the solar radiation then and then we are able to obtain the hot water that means the, the hot water which have required temperature that means it gives the better definition efficiency only in a sunny days so this is all about the natural circulation systems and uh, that is it is also called as a domestic water heating systems because it is used for the only domestic purposes and it does not require any external device or any instrument to pump the water from the tank and to the tank so it is a natural circulation process so only key point is that there is a density difference between the hot water and the cold water so this is the natural circulation system now second type is the forced circulation systems the word indicate that forced that is forced means there is a requirement of any 
external instrument or equipment so that the water gets pumped easily now let's see force recirculation systems it is also known as a industrial solar water heating system because it is the solar water which can obtain from this system is generally used for the industrial purposes so it is also known as the industrial solar water heating systems when large amount of hot water is required for supplying process heat in a industry or in a commercial establishment a natural circulation system is not suitable that means the, what is the disadvantage of the natural circulation system over the forced water circulation system that is it does not produces nat large amount of hot water that is but who that is the natural circulation system but the forced water circulation system is able to produce large amount of hot water and which is required for supplying process that is is in a industry or in a commercial establishment so this is the this is the need of the industrial hot water systems or a natural circulation system but it's a working principle is very easy and depending on that that means the, there is a loop process or there is no loop process depending on that it has a two types that is a large array of flat plate collectors are used are then used and force circulation is maintained with the water pump as we discuss there is a requirement of a external device or equipment that is a water pump for the pumping of the water and there is a large array of a flat plate collector so that it is able to produce the large amount of hot water and which is required for supplying the industry and commercial establishment so in the forced recirculation system there is a large array of a flat plate collector and also there is a water pump for the pumping purpose and depending on the construction of that system that is a, it is constructed in a open loop or in a closed loop configuration depending on that there are two types that is these are classified into two categories first is the closed loop configuration and second one is the open loop configuration the name indicate that closed loop that means there is a formation of closed loop the process is a form, uh, formed in a circular way that means the when one cycle of the process is completed and this cycle repeat again and again that is which is in the closed loop form so it is called as a closed loop configuration and second one is the open loop configuration where there is a separate equipment for the hot water system and the cold water system that is the storage tank for the hot water system and the cold water systems these are different and in closed loop circulation the tank for the hot water and the cold water is the same so depending on that there are two type that is the closed loop configuration and the open loop configuration the closed loop configuration and open loop configuration we will discuss in our next video so in this in that video we will continue with that